In this video, we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are forces of attraction that occur between particles. These could be molecules, atoms, or ions. This is the thing that's going to cause molecules to stick together. It's why a glass of water is going to remain a glass of water, and the water is not just going to fly out all over the place. There are four intermolecular forces that we're going to talk about here. London dispersion forces, ion dipole, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Let's start with the London dispersion forces. Now these are the weakest of the intermolecular forces and they occur between all molecules but they're going to be most noticeable in nonpolar molecules because there's no other attractive forces at work between nonpolar molecules. So these London dispersion forces are going to hold molecules together. It's a very, very, very loose attraction. It's a very weak force. Now, the way that London uh, dispersion forces occur is we have the electrons on a molecule that are going to briefly move to one side of the molecule and expose the positive charge just for a brief moment. So I have uh, a couple molecules here, and the, the red part there is the positive charge, and it's masked here by this green cloud of electrons. Remember, electrons are just kind of randomly moving almost like a cloud and a brief moment we could have actually this cloud of electrons kind of move to the side a little bit and when it does that you can see that the positive charge is just slightly exposed if another molecule is kind of floating around close by for that brief moment this molecule is going to be attracted to that positive charge. All that green stuff around the ice outside is going to kind of pull it in a little bit closer. As soon as those electrons move back though it gets bumped back out. Now this is happening a lot. It's kind of moving all the time, briefly exposing, bouncing back, briefly exposing, bouncing back. So we have this very weak attraction. Now these London dispersion forces are going to be much greater with larger, heavier molecules. So here's an example. I have a molecule here of methane and the black circle is carbon and we have four white hydrogens around it. So that's methane here. And here's another molecule called octane. And octane is made up of the exact same stuff. It's carbons and hydrogens. In this case, we just have eight carbons instead of one carbon. Now methane is a gas at room temperature. And so if we had another methane molecule here, they would actually be very loosely attracted to each other with those London dispersion forces, but they're not attracted enough to actually stick together and form a liquid or a solid. Uh, they're going to remain a gas. Now, octane, on the other hand, is a liquid at room temperature. And so if we bring two octane molecules together, they're going to have enough London dispersion forces that they'll actually stick together just enough to make it a liquid. They'll be kind of be sliding and flowing past one another. And so larger, heavier molecules are going to have more dispersion forces. Here's our next intermolecular force. It's called ion dipole molecular forces. These are stronger than London dispersion forces, and they're going to occur between a polar molecule and an ion. Now, water is an example of a polar molecule. So I have some water here, and here's a water molecule. The red thing there is an oxygen atom, and it's bonded to two hydrogen atoms. This weird symbol right here means partially, and so the hydrogen uh, atoms here are partially positive, and the oxygen is partially negative. So it's not fully negative or fully positive like an ion would be, just a little bit of a charge, and that's due to the polar bonds there. You can watch the video on polar molecules if you want to review what that looks like. Now we have all these water molecules here in the water, and if we take an ionic compound here, ionic compounds are composed of ions, and we drop that into the water, it's going to dissociate, they're going to split apart. And we're going to get a force of attraction here between the partially uh, charged molecule here and the ion. And these are going to kind of stick together just like that. And this is called an ion dipole force. It's stronger than London dispersion because we have those charges there. It's due to these ion dipole forces that we have ionic compounds able to dissolve in water. Here's the next intermolecular force. It's called a dipole-dipole force. With a dipole-dipole force, we're going to have something, again, that's stronger than London dispersion forces. And this is going to occur between two polar molecules. So here's an example. I have two molecules of HBr, uh, hydrogen bromide. And this is uh, an example of a polar molecule. Let's just take a look at the electronegativity values for hydrogen and bromine, just so I can show that that is true. If I look at the electronegativities for hydrogen here is 2.1 and bromine is 2.8. 
So we have a difference there if we subtract the two of 0.7, which is polar. It's in the polar range. And so that means the larger one here, bromine, is going to have a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen a slightly positive charge. Same thing down here, slightly negative and slightly positive. And so we're going to have an attraction here between the slightly negative uh, bromine and the slightly positive hydrogen down here. So these two things are going to attract to each other and they're going to kind of stick together. And so this is what will make molecular compounds uh, remain as a liquid uh, or even a solid sometimes. As they stick together strongly enough we can get a liquid and even stronger we can get a solid. Okay, we have one more intermolecular force called hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is a stronger version of a dipole-dipole force. Hydrogen bonding happens between molecules that have a hydrogen atom. We have a hydrogen atom right here. That's the white one there. That's bonded to something very electronegative. And it has to be one of the following. It has to be either nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine. So one of those three. When we have hydrogen bonded to one of those three, we're going to have such a great uneven sharing happening there. Uh, where we're going to have such a big partially negative charge, like you can see here on this oxygen, um, that we're going to get a much stronger dipole-dipole force. This is why water, which I have some water here, so I have all these water molecules, they're going to kind of stick together. Partially positives are going to stick to partially negatives. And this is why water remains a liquid, even though it's a very, very lightweight molecule. Water actually has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole which is very, very light. So another example, just to show you the difference here, would be sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide has a molar mass of 34 grams per mole, so more than twice as heavy. And so twice as heavy, you'd think it should uh, stick together a little bit more because we saw in the example of methane and octane that octane sticks better and is actually a liquid because it's heavier. In this case, though, sulfur dioxide is actually going to be a gas at room temperature, whereas water is a liquid at room temperature. The reason is because water has hydrogen bonding, whereas sulfur dioxide does not. And so since hydrogen bonding is so strong, we have water, which is a very lightweight molecule, uh, going to be a liquid. And so those are our four types of intermolecular forces.